Hello friends, welcome to Input Output Campus. Today in this video, we will discuss about your coding question for placement. And the question is total number of common factors between two numbers or the total number of common divisors between two numbers. So you will be given two numbers, suppose A and B is given and you have to count the total number of common factors between these two numbers 12 and 24 and you have to show that output. So now the factors of 12 are 1, 2, 3, 4, 6 and 12. So these are the factors of 12. Similarly the factors of 24 are 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 12 and 24. So these are the factors of 24. Now we have to count the total number of common factors between these two numbers. So the common factors between these two numbers are 1, 2, 3, 4, 6 and 12. Okay. So here 5 will not be the factors of 24 because 5 is not divided by 24. Okay. So the common factors between these 12 and 24 are 1, 2, 3, 4, 6 and 12. Here you can see 1 is common between these two. 2 is also common, 3 is common, 4 is common, 6 is common and 12 is common. So these are the common factors. And you have to count how many common factors are there. So you can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. So total 6 common factors are present between these two numbers. So our output will be 6. So this is the question and this question is very very important for a coding test because these types of questions are frequently asked in competitive exams. Okay, so you have to prepare these questions very well and practice it. So now we'll write the code using C++. So first of all, write the basic format of the C++ that is as include bits standard C++ dot H using namespace standard and first write the main function here int main and inside this main function we'll write the code. So write your integer A and V. Suppose A and V are not in the range of, suppose the range of A and V is greater than 10 to the power 9. So in your exam, if A and V are given in the range between 1 to 10 to the power 9, then you can declare it as integer A and V. But if A and V are between 1 to 1 to 10 to the power 18, then you have to write here long long int. So instead of writing this long long int, we can define it here. So define here. So for that right here has define and then ll and then and then right here long long int. Okay. So we can write this ll instead of this long long int here. So just write here ll a and v will be long long integer. So spelling mistake here. So write here long long. Now you want to take the inputs from the user. So for that write here scene A and then V. Now our first task is to find the GCD of these two numbers A and V. So how to calculate the GCD of two numbers? So you can find the GCD of two numbers using Euclidean algorithm or if you want to do it in a shortcut method then you can simply write a function that is there is an inbuilt function named gcd. If you write that function, that will automatically calculate your gcd. You don't have to write the code. So if you write here underscore underscore and then gcd and then inside this write a comma v. So this will calculate the gcd of these two numbers a and b. Okay. So we want to store this inside a variable. Suppose our variable name is long long int n. Okay. So the GCD of a and v will be stored into this n. 
now we will write a for loop to iterate i equals to 1 to i less than square root of n so here n is the gcd n is the gcd okay so now we will iterate from 1 to square root of n 1 to square root of n so write a for loop for int i equals to 1 i less than equals to square root of n square root of n and i plus plus so see here friends if we don't want to write here the square root then we have to square both sides of this equal symbol okay so if we square both sides then the square root will be removed and here will be i square that is here will be i into i so i into i less than equals to n so square root will be removed from here now inside this for loop we'll check if n is completely divided by i the gcd of a and v is n now we'll check if n is completely divided by i that is if n percentile i equals to 0 so n percentile i equals to 0 means n is completely divided by i so if n is completely divided by i then we'll check a condition if n divided by i equals to i if n divided by i equals to i then we'll increase the count value so our initial count value is suppose 0 so ll count equals to 0 so if n divided by i equals to i then we'll increase count value so count will be count plus one else will increase our count value by two so why will increase the count value by two so we'll see an example for better understanding so here our value of a equals to 12 and its factors are one two three four six and twelve and the value of v equals to 24 and its factors are 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 12 and 24 so the GCD of 12 and 24 is 12 so the value of n is 12 now in this for loop our initial i value is 1 so now we'll check if n percentile i equals to 0 so our n value is 12 and i value is 1 so here our n value is 12 and our i value is 1 so if 12 is completely divided by 1 yes completely divided so this condition true so then we'll check if n divided i equals to i so 12 divided i is not equals to i so we'll go to this else condition and our count value will be count plus 2 so initial count was 0 now our count value will be 0 plus 2 that is 2 so why 2 because we are iterating from 1 to square root of n that is we'll iterate 1 to square root of this n this 12 so our common factors will be counted from first and the last value and we'll iterate from this 1 to this 3 so for that for the first condition this 1 and 12 will be counted so our count value will be 2 here now we'll check now we'll increase the i value so i value will be 2 so now we'll check 2 into 2 4 4 is less than equals to n that is 4 is less than equals to 12 yes 4 is less than 12 so we'll check again here if n percentile i equals to 0 so if 12 is divided by 2 that is 12 is completely divided by 2 yes 12 is completely divided by 2 now we'll check here if n by i equals to i no n that is 12 by 2 is not equals to 2 so we'll go to this else condition and our count value will be count plus 2 so our count value is 2 and 2 plus 2 that is 4 so our count value will be 4 and this time these 2 and these 6 will be counted so for that here the count value will be increased by 2 and our count value will be 4 now we'll again increase the i value so our i value will be 3 and we'll check here 3 into 3 
is which is 9 9 is less than equals to 12 yes 9 is less than 12 so we'll go inside this for loop and we'll check if 12 percentile i that is 12 percentile 3 is 0 that is 12 is completely divided by 3 yes now we'll check here if 12 by 3 equals to 3 no 12 by 3 is not equals to 3 so we'll go to this else condition and the count value will be increased by 2 so our previous count value was 4 now the count value will be increased by 2 that is our count value will be 6 and these two is for this 3 and this 4 okay so now our count value is 6 now we'll again increase the i and now our i will be 4 now we'll check 4 into 4 which is 16 16 is less than equals to n that is 16 is less than equals to 12 no this condition false so we will go outside of this for loop so for loop ends here so we will go outside of this for loop and we will print the count value okay so this will be our final result so now our code is complete and now we will run it Okay, you have to give the input that is A and B. So our A was 12 and our B was 24. Press enter and you can see our output is 6. And this is perfect output. So you can check this by giving another input. And today I have a dare for you that is you have to solve this question using the vector. So try to solve this question using vector. So if you solve this using vector then please let me know in the comment section that you have done this using vector okay okay friends so if you enjoyed this video and if you find this video helpful then please like the video and share it with your friends and thank you for watching this video see you in the next video till then take care